have with us Vyas Dev Ralan, who started his career with a security and internet gateway solution startup. He then went on to work on multiple e-commerce and tech ventures nationally and internationally before starting Next Education India, which is now one of the top three digital education solution providers of the country. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Ralhan. Getting down to it, what is the big shift in the education space that you are trying to work on through Next Education India and what led to its inception? Hey, as, uh, as you might be aware, look, from last one decade, we have been building individual products which fundamentally, you know, but leveraging technology to help schools do some of those things better, whether it was like replacing a blackboard with a digital board, whether it's removing a physical book with a five digital book, whether automating their operations in terms of, you know, uh, you know ERP and uh, moving the labs to simulation environment rather than doing the physical experiments. Right? So we've been doing a lot of these things. And as we did over the last decade or so, was that the revolution is happening is that the school has to move everything. You need to be fundamentally able to run a school out of a box on the internet, on the devices, anywhere, everywhere. So school can't be limited to the physical infraction for 45 minutes in a classroom. Mm -hmm. So that was a big theme which three years back I started dreaming through because I was seeing already the trends in US etc. That's where it is headed towards and you know homeschooling was on the rise there. As you know that most of the school inceptions uh, things which were done which is considered the axioms of schooling were pretty much done in the industrial age with the requirements to having minimum standard education was a lot more important up to the high school rather than really, really making children learn. You know, knowledge even in that time was a privileged few thing. Mm -hmm. High school was not about trying to have privilege. It was about how to put the boy into the factory and he's a disciplined one. You don't take, want to take a farm boy into a factory, you just let him go through. Some. So a lot of those things have be had become very, very like, you know, people have started thinking as if that is what education is about without realizing that that style of education is a 70, 80, probably 150 years old. Yeah. Not more than that. Education for everybody and focusing on minimum standards of education is just a 150 year old concept. Before that, education was a privileged people stuff. Education has gone through phases and we fundamentally believe as now the economy is becoming knowledge economy. Now we have a both the problems. We have a mass scale problem of industrialization also but also providing personalized education of the older ages. Mm -hmm. So we need the, you know, in, in UK, we say you need the 18th century quality education mm -hmm. for the 19th century masses in the 21st century. That's where the today's requirements exist, right? And that fundamentally cannot happen a, unless and until students, parents, teachers, everybody participate. And that fundamentally can't happen unless until there's a platform which can reduce the requirement of one teacher required for five students because that's practically not possible. Then that mass problem. Was okay. So that was playing out in my head. And, you know, that is why three years back, we started making something called next learning platform from we almost have spent, you know, near about like 70, 80 crores plus on building that platform. It's one of a kind in the world. Today, you cannot find anywhere in the world. In fact, that's one of the reasons we are launching internationally, which does everything. So you see Google classroom, it's just an LMS. You see blackboard. It is just an LMS. There is no platform which does ERP, which is school's operational items, plus academic operations, plus assessments, plus con content, plus personalization. So we are doing everything. What about children from the lower socioeconomic status who may not have exposure or you know access to that sort of technology? See, uh, honestly, I think the government has started that. In fact, uh, starting TV channels is mm -hmm. the right approach because look. Okay. Government can't solve the device problem today. Yes. It's like a $15 billion problem. True. So 20 crore children, if you have to give them a device, it's a $15 billion problem. Government can't allocate that budget right now. Yes. So I think uh, running the TV channels and government has done the right thing, running 14 channels so that every class is a channel so that you can repeat, you know, lessons okay. five, six times. All right. And then on a weekend, you run the revision classes so that you fundamentally, government has to give into the broadcasting measure. Mm -hmm. And then government will do that. That will make sure everybody reaches. The problem which is going to come is of the mentorship and doubt clearing, etc. Mm -hmm. 
I think that is where the government will have to make certain connect between the government school teachers and the parents on a Zoom or something of equivalent that sort, so that at least students can ask the doubts there. Yes. Because uh, see, uh, fundamentally, if you remove the live lectures from the equation, you can run this platform without video for not more than thirty, forty, fifty rupees a child a month. Okay. That's yeah. relatively easier problem to yes. solve. Yes. I think you can even run it in twenty rupees if you take the ERP etc. out. So government can. Uh, so government will come up with a bare bone platform of LMS. Okay. At least for the government schools where the child they will put up a discussion board. Children can put the doubts there. Somebody yeah. can answer it slowly. And they will come up with a homework mechanism where you publish the homework, children do it and upload it. Government teachers can test it. So I think government, uh, once it steers away from live lectures and interaction, I think it can do it in a very very economical manner. And I think that's where they're headed to. You have uh, been known to extensively invest in R and D to come up with more refined content and curriculum. So what are some of the benefits of such a research intensive process uh, that you have uh, adopted? See, uh, see, one of the things that has helped us is, uh, uh, is that, look, research in education, one can be used for very long term, mm -hmm. and second can be used across products. Yeah. Uh, okay, so long term, and that is where I was telling you, that's where the money and the expectation alignment has to be there. Mm -hmm. I could fundamentally spend $20 million to make a product in 12, 13, 14, I think, in fact, I started in 10, I was making the product at least 14 content, fundamentally audiovisual. I could invest that money thinking that I will use it for 15 years mm -hmm. because nobody was pressuring me to have an exit in seven years. Mm -hmm. So one that, uh, you know, helps keep that you can, if you make a good quality thing, you, for example, if you make a great audiovisual, mm -hmm. you use it in the teacher classroom. Mm -hmm. Then when you are shooting an experiment, there's explanation again, you can plug in that video. Mm -hmm. When you're making a book in its QR code also, you can plug the same video and on the learning platform also, you're going to use the same video. So fundamentally, reusability of made really, really good content is a lot. Mm -hmm. And that fundamentally helps you, you know, and that is why it's very important to not have an opinion. You don't know which way the school is going to consume what you're making. You mm -hmm. can't say only this, right? So that one thing helps. Second thing is uh, fundamentally, look, uh, if you have an integrated approach, your mm -hmm. products keep on improving from each other. We know. Mm -hmm from 7,000 schools, which audio visual they use. So we know where they want to stress. So when you're writing a book, you know, these chapters I should write slightly better. So, and then how you can write your lesson plan. According. So I think having R and D and analytics focus, and then being able to build for 20 years, I think that is what is helping us. Okay. And you know, if you look at companies balance sheet, right? I mean, the last five years, we would have spent close to last five years itself. I'm telling you, we would have spent close to 140 odd crores in R and D. That much money has gone in, in yeah. uh, this one, right? And a lot of times when people come and ask me, Roland, your price is costly. I show them the balance sheet. I say, look, sir, I'm running this from 12 years. Last year, I made 7 crore profit on 300. So I simply ask, sir, if you're running a 300 crore business, how much money you should make? He will at least give 20% margin. Then I will show him my making 11, 7 crores. And say, look, sir, now tell me. <laughs> you know, if I was charging you a lot, that 300 crore should lead somewhere. No. Yeah. Fundamentally, most of it is going back in R&D because, as I said, we are building for a long term mm -hmm. and we are thinking that, you know, now I feel the cultivation platform is happening and this SaaS platform adoption will help us through. In this coming time, where would you focus your efforts in the domain of education and uh, why would you choose that area of focus? I think fundamentally now the focus has to happen on reinforcement learning. See, now one thing with this COVID is happening is internet will become the basic requirement of every human being. True. So lot of offline content, etc. will not be required. Mm -hmm. You will can fundamentally start assuming that the child will be connected, even if intermittent, right? So now that opens up a whole new area of how to use this whole internet, vast internet resources by building the school filter on it. Mm -hmm. And then using that into the complete learning path of the child. I think that area of research is a lot more interesting and fundamentally technology will be able to gel with you better. And then use the resources in the world rather than in your teacher's hand yeah. to provide you a better learning experience. I think that change, those things will happen over two, three, four years. There are a lot of concerns around it. One is like, you know, how much you can really, really probe into the child. For example, you know, today technology exists that you can check child's focus. Mm -hmm. You, If I am you and I talking, there is enough analytics available which can tell how interested we were in the conversation, how many times you blinked the eyes, how many times you did not look at the screen. 
but how much of that is fair on the child to track and use right some of those issues are going to come in and uh, you know so i think uh, and then you can't expose the internet to the child right? because you don't know where he'll go so how to filter internet as well as how much to know the child without crossing the you know child should not feel he's getting controlled by that program right then it then it'll start hitting because people when they feel that they're losing control they yeah. lose the interest right that's why child find the interesting book interesting and the teacher book not interesting yeah. because he thinks he has a choice to pick up a book you know random experiments have been done on this you get the three books textbooks all right and you give to children to pick one chances mm-hmm. are in a year they will read more that book because they think they're involved in the decision okay. a lot of things so i'm saying so a lot of some of those things will come so that's a area of major research okay. reinforcement learning also is not a solved art i think a lot of spectacular field experiments have happened on that Newton had raised some 150 160 million dollars to build a adaptive platform which will do personalized learning i think they finally okay. shut down you know then one two three school all school was trying to do it in a more physical and digital combined manner that failed so i think that is a area of interest and focus over the next 3 4 years okay well um finally coming to what would be your advice to other organizations in the sector see i think there are two right one as i said look fundamentally making lot of money in education mm-hmm. uh in core education has not been a proven theory okay you know coaching and sending kids abroad these two things have made lot of money you know providing children career counseling to mm-hmm. get them into a some college or a university which pays you kickback that has worked a lot and sending your kids to some engineering or a medical college these two things have made proven money because people want to spend on the career spending themselves so the kind of vcp models you make unless until you stay in these one or two domains i think fundamentally very very tough uh so think what you're trying to do and with what reasons you are trying to do. you know there are a lot of ways to make money It doesn't have to be the hard way right so and second thing is to people have to think of not being too opinionated education in diverse country like india can't be uniform mm-hmm. you know country can't decide one language one dress one culture one right it does not work for india yeah. you know and uh, you know it's huge de- debates and huge things there so try to be see how you can stay neutral to all that and provide something which can be used by a lot otherwise just becomes a trap for example for every guy who think video is great people say look no reading makes it remember or get involved more right every kind of opinion exists and sometimes a lot of startups get caught into my approach is the right way and mm-hmm. that is going to transform the world i think don't get caught into all that that's not a smart mm-hmm. move in my mind those are two things i think people if you can do mm-hmm. something around it i think you will have a better journey in that text thank you so much mr alan it's been an absolute pleasure conversing with you